And um, I found something in the Word of God today that uh, revealed to me even more how important fellowship is. Fellowship with God and fellowship with uh, other Christians is so very important. And, uh, and it ha- is all connected to what we're going to get into tonight. Uh, so that's the 25th. And then that next Sunday is the fifth Sunday of May. The fifth Sunday is going to be also another great day. Our kids' church, uh, they're, they're getting something together. They're going to have a presentation that morning. The youth group is going to have a presentation that morning. The Zion dancers are going to be uh, leading us in worship uh, that morning. We're going to be taking communion. And so several special things. That's probably going to be something moving forward on the fifth Sunday Uh, The Sundays that have five Sundays, um, we'll get to do that. So mark your calendars for that, and uh, it's going to be a a great Sunday as well. Excited about what the Lord is doing. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 33. Going to begin reading, and uh, we're going to read verse 11, and then also we'll finish our text with Hebrews chapter 13. Going to read 15 and 16. But we will begin with Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 11. Will you stand with me if you're able and for the reading of God's word. Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 11. The voice of joy, the voice of gladness, and the voice of the bridegroom And the voice of the bride, the voice of them that shall say, Praise the Lord of hosts. For the Lord is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. For I will cause to return the captivity of the land as at the first, saith the Lord. Let's also read Hebrews chapter 13, verses 15 and 16. The scripture there says in Hebrews 13 and 15, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But to do good... And to communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Amen. I want to preach to you tonight. The Lord will help me. This message I've entitled, just simply, Sacrifices of Praise. Sacrifices of Praise. Let's pray one more time together. Lord, God, I praise you. Thank you, Lord. Your word is so good. So good. It's It's meat for the soul, Lord, and we just thank you. Lord, I thank you for the folks that are here tonight as we've come together to worship. Lord, now we're going to worship in our the preaching and the receiving of the Word of God. I pray, Lord, that you would uh, just speak to every individual. Lord, for the new convert and also for the elders of the church and everyone in between. Lord, that you would speak to us, feed us with your word, uh, remind us, wash us in the word tonight, uh, sharpen the edge of our understanding tonight in your word, and Lord, we will be careful to give you all the praise, anoint our words, anoint our hearing that we would receive, and we ask it all in your mighty name, the name of Jesus, amen, amen. You can be seated, God bless you. Sacrifices of praise. Uh, did you realize that the child of God in, in, in multiple ways really, the child of God is a priest today? <coughs> Excuse me. We understand this because as a child of God, we in this New Testament, now we're living in the New Testament time. <coughs> What's going on here? And... Uh, <clears throat> We are able to bring sacrifices to God. Just like in the Old Testament, uh, sacrifice, you know, in that system of worship, uh, the, the high priest or the priest would be the one that had the responsibility 
uh, even on behalf of others, uh, when it was their worship, the priests would uh, assist them and all that needed to be done to uh, bring a, a sacrifice unto the Lord. Well, in our day, you and I, the children of God, we also are priests. Amen. We understand it. We bring sacrifices to God. In the Old Testament, uh, all of the Old Testament offerings, there were many different kinds there. We know that they were all pointing toward Jesus and his sacrifice for our sins. Now, uh, it's interesting. If you were to go back and read Leviticus chapters 1 through 7, they end that time. It takes great detail of, of explaining the five different types of sacrifice uh, sacrifices that were made in the Old Testament uh, in the Old Testament uh, system of worship. Here, the first one was the burnt offering. The burnt offerings, in just simple terms, I won't have time to get into all of them tonight in detail. But in the burnt offering, an animal was placed on the altar, and that animal was completely burned. I mean, all the way upon the altar. And then there was also a grain offering, like they would take uh, flour, frankincense, and salt was always there. And uh, this was, a, the first one was a blood sacrifice, right? Because the animal, of course, has blood, but the grain uh, did not. And then thirdly, the, there's a peace offering. The peace offering was all of the fat. All of the fat from the sacrifice was placed on top of the burnt offering and the, the grain offering, and uh, it was offered unto the Lord. And then uh, there is a sin offering, and only, only the fat and only the blood was offered to God there. And because since it was a sin offering, the, the bulk of the animal was sacrificed outside of the camp. Because it was a sin offering and sin is so and was so uh, repugnant to God that that was done outside of the camp. But, all, but now the blood and the fat was offered uh, to God. And then there was a trespass offering. And trespass offering, it was concerning sin, but also things that caused harm to someone else. If someone stole someone's uh, 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 animal of some sort or something that was done and it was, it was harmful to someone else in some way or the other, this was a trespass offering and restitution was required by the law, by God. They had to pay back. If they stole something, they had to give something back to pay restitution uh, for this. This was part of the trespass offerings. But offerings burned on the altar, they were offered to God. And God described, him, uh, uh, described the offerings that pleased him as a sweet aroma. Amen. Uh, just think about it. I, I, you, it says, has to be the same, right? as uh, if you were to build a fire, the smells that would come from that. And then, of course, if you uh, put a side of ribs on the grill, you know how good that smells. I just imagine that good, sweet aroma. But the it wasn't necessary uh, like we think a sweet aroma but when it was done in the right, with the right attitude and the believer there standing before the altar had the right motive and their heart was towards God, God would receive that offering and it would be a sweet smelling Savior unto the Lord. And it totally dependent, was dependent upon the Israelites. You know, when the Israelites were disobedient, God wasn't pleased with their sweet aroma offerings. Offerings were accepted by God if the one offering was drawing near to God and living by his law. It, it, it speaks to you and I today when we praise and worship God and our hearts are humbled before him and things are right with us between us and God and our hearts are towards God. Amen. That worship is 
real worship, a sacrifice of praise that God himself will accept when our hearts are where they need to be with God. And so the Christian should live his or her life as a living sacrifice and it will be a sweet smelling aroma to God as Christ was. Our lives should be spiritual sacrifices that God will accept. That This is what our lives are supposed to be all about. We are to be a, a, a spiritual sacrifice that God will accept. And in contrast, most aspects of sin and trespass offerings are not described as sweet aroma. These offerings are given because of sin and God hates sin. And so let's take a few moments tonight if we can as we look through the word of God that you would be able to find four sacrifices of the believer speaking in, in terms of New Testament uh, for you and I. These are four sacrifices that the word of God gives us. First of all, the first one is you can sacrifice your person. You can sacrifice your person. Good, I think a good way to look at it is we are we are we are looked we are living in this vessel. We we our soul will live for all of eternity, right? Our soul will live for all of eternity, but our person, who we are, we have a body that we live in, we have a spirit, and we have a mind. And so the, the part that you and I need to, uh, to, that becomes a sacrifice is the body, the spirit, and the mind. And so you and I have a, uh, a call that's upon our lives to do just that. The scripture tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, listen to the words that Paul uses here. He says, I beseech you or I beg you by the mercies of God, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, ex acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. The inspired emphasis on this topic is revealed by the words that the Apostle Paul uses here in this scripture. He says, he starts out by saying, I beseech you. We don't use that word, but he's giving them the idea. I'm begging you to hear what I'm about to tell you. I'm pleading with you that you will hear these instructions I'm about to give. And he, he tells them by the mercies of God revealing this is a deep divine calling uh, from the Lord. He says, present your bodies a living sacrifice. This body that we live in, uh, this body, the things we do with this body, right? We are responsible. And he's saying, uh, present your bodies uh, as a living sacrifice. Amen. We present, we are our action uh, uh, self-surrender if you will Jesus said if any man comes after me let him deny himself take up his cross and follow me we're talking about being a sacrifice of praise when we humble ourselves to the word of God and we surrender to the will of God totally in our lives we become a living sacrifice of being presented unto the Lord how we look how we present our bodies what we do with our bodies what we put in to our bodies we it has to do with a being a living sacrifice a sacrifice to this original audience here for the book of Hebrews was uh, was uh, was someone giving up or, of an animal or whatever they gave up. They knew quite well what he was talking about when he says you need to be a living sacrifice. They understood in their mind, amen, a, a, a valuable, priceless animal uh, that was being led, right, uh, and, and going to be given 
up to God. It was going to cost them something. This was a valuable commodity to them. This was a sacrifice. He said, no, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't need your animals anymore. It doesn't need any of those anymore. What he wants is you. What he wants is not your oxen on the altar, but he wants you to lay yourself upon the altar of God and be a living sacrifice unto the Lord. They knew quite well what he meant there in that day. And, and so do you and I tonight. The sacrifice lost its life in praise to God. It lost its life in praise to God. It was giving up. It was given up for God. It was, uh, this was a picture that was very vivid in their minds. Now, you and I, we worship him in spirit and in truth. We die out to him. We must die daily. Amen. It's no longer what we want, right? We, it's no longer my will, but it's the will of God. This is the cross that we have to bear. I'll say it again. Jesus said, if any man comes after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. You and I cannot bear the cross that Jesus bore on that day. No, but but you and I all have a cross that we must bear in this life of ours. We die out. We must die daily. We must be crucified with Christ. Galatians 2 and 20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me Jesus gave it all on his cross we are called to give it all as we carry our cross we should we can't bear his cross we must bear ours if you're going to receive a crown one day you're going to have to bear your cross now. Our life, our mind, our body, our spirit is to be sacrificed in praise unto God. We will not naturally make sacrifices in this life for God until we are sacrificed ourselves. Until the individual is completely committed, until the person is completely died out on the altar of God, uh, the sacrifices will not come naturally. Amen. Uh, but let, let me explain something to you. Uh, it's, it's something like this. There are times we make sacrifices and we think nothing of them. There's other times we make sacrifices and it's a big deal to us and we complain a little bit. Right? It's just like, uh, I, I, you know, as you get older, I guess you appreciate the sacrifices that your parents made for you. You didn't even realize what was going on, but through the years they made sacrifices so you could have things and have a better life. I know that's the case of, in my own life. And uh, as I got older, before I got had kids, I started thinking, man, that was a big deal. They really put themselves out for this and that and the other thing until I had kids. And then those, those things that they needed, I didn't say, oh, Lord, I have to do this for Macy. Or I have to do, no, it's just like, no problem, I've got it, I'll do it. Right? To make sacrifices. And so those, those types of sacrifices are sacrifices that just come natural. And it's not a big deal. You just do that because your heart is completely sold out for that particular thing. When you are completely sold out to God, uh, the sacrifices that he uh, places on and commands us to do, uh, they're not a big deal. Amen. They're a big deal when our hearts are not surrendered. They're a big deal when we don't really uh, love him. When all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, uh, you know, it's, it's a big deal. But when we're totally sold out to God, uh, those things are no big deal because they're for the one that we ultimately love the most. Amen. So they're not going to come naturally until we are sacrificed ourselves. No one forces us. Service and consecration to God come from a totally surrendered heart. 
When one totally gives himself to God, all other giving becomes easy. Right? It becomes easy. The person who's not totally sold out to God has hitches in their service to the Lord. Amen. Help us tonight. A living, look what it says there, a living sacrifice. But then he begins to describe some other things here. A living, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy is that first description. Not just a sacrifice, but a holy sacrifice. Why is that important? Because God doesn't just accept any old sacrifice. God only accepts a holy sacrifice. Uh, it, it is useless to do something less than what God expects. We're wasting our time if we attempt to do something and do it less than what God would ex expect because he would not accept it. The story of Cain and Abel is an Old Testament story, but it's one that speaks to us now. Uh, Abel made, the Bible says that Abel made a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. What happened? Ab Abel, brought, Abel brought the first, the Bible says he brought the firstlings of the flock. And uh, what happened? The Bible says God ex accepted the sacrifice, this sacrifice. But Cain, all it says about Cain, Cain brought the fruit of the ground. Now, we don't know, uh, there's been all kind of a, a conjecture here that why, you know, one was a blood sacrifice, one wasn't. You know, we got all of our guesses. All we know, we need to know two things, and I think this is all that we need to know. One was accepted by God, and one was not. The only other hint that we get was the, 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 the uh, Abel's sacrifice was the firstling's of the flock. The other one just sounds like uh, Cain went through the garden there, picked up a couple bu bushels of vegetables uh, and took them to the Lord. Did Cain, uh, did Cain bring a sacrifice of praise unto God? Yes, he did, but it was not accepted because it was less than what it should have been. For one reason or another, a just and holy God did not accept his sacrifice. Cain brought the, uh, excuse me, and uh, Abel brought the firstlings of the flock. Friend, we must die out on the altar of God, uh, totally surrender to the Lord so that we may be a more excellent sacrifice uh, unto God. If you say, Pastor, I can't give or I can't be, I can't do what some other people people can but every one of us can give 100 percent every one of us can give our all and you may think your all is not very much amen but it's when it's a hundred percent that's all you got and that's all that God requires, our whole heart, 100% of our heart. A life of sacrifice is one that puts God and his word absolutely number one in their life. One that shuns the very appearance of evil. One that abhors evil. One that separates themselves in word and deed from the things and the ways of this world. To live a holy life. Friend, holiness is God is still God's standard for living for his people. Holiness is living out a sanctified life. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 6 beginning in verse 17. Going to go all the way to chapter 7 verse 1. Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. And look, here's a promise. If you do that, I will receive you and will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Chapter 7 starts out by saying this. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. We are presenting our 
ourselves as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable, when we cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit as we are attempting to perfect holiness in the fear of God. You see, when we refrain from things of an unholy nature, we are making a sacrifice of praise unto God. When we refrain some, from some things that Christians should not do, it is a sacrifice of praise unto the Lord. When we choose to dress modest instead of immodest, we are praising God with our actions. When we refrain from worldly entertainment that is contrary to the ways of a Christ-like life, we are praising God through our practices of life. You see, a halfway sacrifice, it will not be accepted unto God as a sacrifice of praise. Amen. It's either 100% or nothing at all because 99%, as you've heard, will not do. Amen. So it has to begin with us, right? A life that is committed to the word of God. And like never before, I think it was in chapel the other morning, we were talking about the idea, uh, you know, there is peer pressure. Well, it's not just in teenagers, right? We feel pressure uh, uh, all around us all the time in our own uh, families, in our own communities, in our country in which we live. There's all kind of pressure, all kind of influences that wants us to bend or bow or to compromise our stance and our commitment unto God but friend a sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God cannot bend cannot bow because we are sold out to God amen we are sold out to God secondly the second kind of sacrifice amen after you get your person sacrificed you can sac number two is you can sacrifice your purse if you don't carry a purse you can sacrifice your wallet now, right? If he doesn't have your purse or your wallet, he doesn't have you. If he's not in the middle of your finances, he doesn't have you like he wants you. You say, Pastor, does God need my money? No, he doesn't need anything. What he wants is your heart. And he knows the human heart is so attached to dollar bill signs. For where your treasure is, that your heart shall be also. I believe that's so much, that so the reason we have so much teaching about money in the Word of God, because God knew, hey man, he, the Word tells us that the love of money, the love of money, not money, but the love of money is the root of all evil. And so you can sacrifice your purse, you can sacrifice your wallet. Go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Uh, beginning there in verse 1 through verse 5. Moreover, brethren, we do, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberty. For therefore to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves. They not only gave what they could, they gave more, right? They gave more, praying us with much entreaty that we should receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. You see that? They gave themselves first unto the Lord and then they were able to do uh, all the rest. When you willingly and cheerfully give unto the Lord, it is a sacrifice unto the Lord. It is a sacrifice of praise. Right? We, we have times of giving here. Probably I would say most of your giving is done in your own church. No doubt you have other ministries and other people, other things that you give your money to. If it's for the Lord, it's for the Lord. And so you give when you're giving that and you're giving out of a heart that you're glad to give. 
and you're cheerful when you're giving. Nobody's forcing you to give. You know, it wouldn't be very much worship if I got up here with a nine millimeter every Sunday morning and collected the offering. We might get a little bit more, hadn't we? <laughs> One week anyway, the rest, the next week nobody would be here. <laughs> But not forcing anybody to do anything. That's not worship. That's not praise. But when you do it with a heart that I'm just glad to give. I'm just, I, it makes me happy. It fills me with joy. When you have that kind of attitude and you're doing it for the right motivation, not doing it to be seen, not doing it to be recognized, not doing it, but only, re I'm doing it because I'm wanting to give unto God and the work of God. That is a sacrifice of praise. That is a sacrifice of praise. Amen. And so it's only a sacrifice of when it affects you financially. If it's not a sacrifice, I'm not sure how much praise or worship is involved in that. Doesn't it make sense? Even in certain sacrifices in the Old Testament, certain times there, they, the, what was given in the sacrifice was based on the social standing or status of the individual. Someone who was a high-ranking person in society, maybe they had a, a, some more prosperity in their life or more wealth, they were required for the same type of offering, they were required to give a large animal like an oxen. And other people, you know, in, the, in, in, in Israel, uh, the very poor people, uh, they were required to, to accomplish the same thing. They were required to give a, a, a dove or something or a bird. And uh, this was just showing and speaking to us that it's, uh, uh, you know, it's like this. $20 is not a sacrifice for some people. Amen. Amen. There are people that twenty dollars. If if you lost twenty dollars, you wouldn't you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't. Some of you wouldn't remember it. You ever been doing the laundry? My wife says she gets paid to do the laundry. Anybody else get paid to do the laundry? I walk past the, the laundry sometimes, and I see dollar bills and everything else laying out there. And I'm not wealthy. I guess I, I'm. I think I'm brain dead sometimes. I leave money in there, and uh, she probably got enough to escape now. She's got so much money built up. Over 22 years. But for somebody, you know, maybe $20 is not a sacrifice for some. But for somebody else, $20 is a huge sacrifice. And so it's not about what the, what, it's not about the amount of dollars or whatever. But it is about the sacrifice. Because we're talking about this is not just paying a bill. But this is worship unto God. This is a sacrifice of praise unto the Lord. It's not about the dollar amount, but the sacrifice that is pleasing to God and that may be different for you or for me. Uh, we sometimes look at giving offerings as an obligation or something we do so the church can pay its bills or meet the budget. When, but when we have offering time in our worship service, it's just a continuation of worship. If the offering time kills the service for you, you may have the wrong motivation behind your giving. But man, he killed the spirit. He took up the offering. If taking up the offering kills the moving of the spirit, something's wrong with our giving. Because it is an act of worship unto God. You see, uh, uh, can I tell you that tithing is not considered worship or, or excuse me, not considered praise or a sacrifice? You know why tithe is not considered a sacrifice? Because the tithe belongs to God. You're not giving anything when you're giving your paying, you're giving your tithes. We call it paying your tithes. That kind of sounds like it's a bill. But when we're giving the tithes, right, when we don't withhold our tithes, we're giving it to God. And uh, so uh, tithe, the tithe belongs to God. And uh, in my opinion, I can give you my opinion every once in a while, if you're not giving at least 10% of your increase, then you are robbing God. Amen. And so what we give above the tithe, that is the sacrifice of praise. And uh, you say, Pastor, how is giving to God a sacrifice? H how is that a sacrifice? Well, let's just say that you had $100 
uh, extra in a particular month in, uh, in your household and you have an extra $100. Well, that extra $100, you can maybe uh, uh, take your family out for a really nice dinner. Uh, you can buy something special uh, with that. Uh, you might get a tank of gas even uh, with $100. <laughs> Maybe. And, uh, but if you make a choice, you go, you know what? Instead of spending money on something extra, I'm going to make a sacrifice to God. I'm going to give up that steak dinner this month, and I'm going to give this. That is a sacrifice unto God. Amen. Uh, you say, oh, pastor, I don't know about giving and all of these things. Friend, there are some people that spend more money covering up their gray hair than they give to God every year. Ooh, I thought I'd hear some shouting over that when I felt somebody shoot a 45 right past my ear. I mean, we find money to spend on all kind of other things uh, but are we making a sacrifice to God or are we just giving him the bare minimum? Oh, Lord, help us to see that this is an act of worship unto God. This is an act of praise unto the Lord when we give. You know, when there is an option and we choose to give to God, it is a sacrifice and it is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Paul is honoring, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 18, Paul is honoring a sacrifice of praise in giving from a person named Epaphroditus. I don't know who would name their kid Epaphroditus, but this one got it. And uh, Paul is referencing giving this offerings of money in this context. You may have to read more of it to get it. But he says something like this. But I have all. Saying I, I need it. I got everything I need and, and then some. I in abound. I am full. Having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. You see, Paul was always traveling and he had people in other places supporting the, the spreading of the gospel and the, and the establishing of new churches and the, and the evangelism that was taking place all the time. And so people would, all, when they could, they would send things valuable to them so they could continue on the work of the Lord and he's saying what they sent it was an odor of a sweet smell a sacrifice acceptable and well pleasing to God it's talking about a sacrifice of praise it wasn't a bottle of perfume as far as we know but when we give to God with a cheerful heart we, we, we first God loves a cheerful giver and also the giving is like a, a sacrifice and it has an aroma when it's done with the right attitude and the right motive and a cheerful heart. It's, it, it's like it travels up to God and it's like a very satisfying smell in the nostrils of God. It pleases Him. That sacrifice of praise. Number three, you can offer a sacrifice of praise with your mouth. Did you know that? That was the easy one. We knew that already. You can offer a sacrifice of praise with your mouth with words that come from the heart. Amen. Look at Hebrews 13 and 15 again. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. This is when we speak praise unto God. This is when we sing Praise unto God. When we speak and when we sing in a church service, friend, God is paying attention to what goes on in a worship service. Do you know that? He's paying attention. And when we begin to sing as a congregation, every true worshiper in the house is getting the attention of God. And we are making a sacrifice of praise unto the Lord. The fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. Now think about this entire subject and, uh, and we gather that these words must be sincere and from the heart. When we praise him, the, the, the heart must be sincere, right? Our heart must be towards God 
and sincere coming from the heart, we don't want to be included along with those mentioned in Matthew chapter 15 and 8. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. No, this verse here is telling us that we can speak praise from our hearts that is equal to a sacrifice in giving or giving up something that is valuable just as we begin to praise the Lord. You know why or how you can tell oftentimes how pleased that God is with the worship that's going on? His presence right he inhabits the praises of his people we experience that in a church service hey we experience it in our car sometimes riding that you ever get lost you ever had revival all by yourself just riding down the road and you just begin to sing uh, and uh, I was singing a while back uh, I mean I was getting with it and I stopped all of a sudden the guy standing sitting right next to me and the red light was just going like this oh well that's all right, amen. Maybe he needed to see it. But I was just worshiping God. And God filled the, filled the car with the presence of the Lord. And he does it in our homes, in our church, and other places. When we begin to worship him and give him a sacrifice of praise. When you praise him like you're the only one in the room. When you praise him like you don't care who sees you or who hears you. When you sing from your heart. When you speak thanks and praise and honor and glory unto God from the bottom of your heart I believe it puts a smile on the face of God when his children offer up a sacrifice of praise amen I wonder if we could do that right now just spontaneously just lift your hands lift your hearts unto God right here and just begin to praise give thanks give thanks unto his name tonight hallelujah Lord we bless you we honor you today hallelujah to God Lord, we bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You're everything to us, Lord. Hallelujah. You are the air that we breathe. Amen. I believe it puts a smile on God's face when we praise him, especially when we just let go and let God have his way, when we worship him with no doubt when we worship him with no reservation, when we take the brakes off, you know, when we don't hold back any and don't let anything get in the way, it is a sacrifice of praise unto the Lord. Psalm 63 and 3, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Psalms 34 and 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Psalms 150 and 6 says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. And we can all do that. We can use our mouth to give a sacrifice of praise. And lastly, let me leave you with this. We can make the sacrifice of performance and or doing good. Look at the, and it's, and it's found in the next verse in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 16. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. When you do good for the Lord's sake, do good to other people and for other people. It is a sacrifice of praise to God. When you see a family in need and you buy them their meal or you take them some food. Let's all watch Briar go out. Hallelujah. When you do good to someone else, you are actually giving praise to God. When you, maybe you mow their yard without them even asking, you're doing good. You're giving praise to God. 
right? When you when you're meeting a need in someone's life, when you took that meal over to a family in need, when you paid for someone's meal, when you mowed their grass, when you gave them a helping hand, when you do good to someone else, it is being presented like a sacrifice to God. You didn't have to do it. Nobody forced you. Maybe you did it without anybody even asking you to do it. Maybe it even wasn't a time when God said, do this. You just did it. That is a sacrifice of praise unto God. That is spreading the love of Jesus to people, right? You you didn't have to do it, but you did. You may not have realized it, but God is taking notice, and it was praise to him. He accepted that just like any other sacrifice as praise unto the Lord when we do it with the right motive and the right, right, that right, right, the right agenda, if you will, in our hearts. But you know what? It jumped out to me. I didn't even realize what this was until I looked at it because I read this old King James version in verse 16. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. I went, for communicate? What does that mean? So, of course, you go in, uh, into your Bible dictionary and you figure out the, the original word there and the original scripture, and it's koinonia. Koinonia. It's translated from the word koinonia. That is Christian fellowship or communion with God or more commonly with fellow Christians. That's why we love to eat so much. There's your answer. You're welcome. I'm praising God. (laughs) When we fellowship, it is a sacrifice well-pleasing to God. When we commune with God, but not just God, when we commune with the family of God, other Christians, that's why it is beneficial to us. We thought it was just a fleshly thing. But there's something spiritual that takes place When we get to know each other and when we come together and commune with one another, that Christian community is strengthened. Amen. That that, that fellowship is strengthened. And that's why fellowship is so important. Amen. I I just thought it was some church of God thing that we all used to. But no, that koinonia, that, that fellowship with the people of God is important. Well, we had some very serious moments. I don't know if I made half the students upset with me or if I didn't at chapel service the other night or other morning. And, but I got to tell them the, such importance of being in church and being a part of a church. And one of those is having fellowship with other Christian people. Because through the rest of the week, a, a lot of people are just surrounded by people of the world all the rest of the week. How much more important it is when we get together with people the same type of faith that we have and communicate and we worship together. That's really what this special Wednesday night that we're going to have on the 25th is. Yeah, we're going to have a good meal. We're going to sit around and eat and enjoy fellowship and and share things and talk with things. But then we're going to worship God and we're going to receive from the Word. And all of that and all that we've mentioned tonight, it is a sacrifice of praise. Because we can have a choice to do something else. But when we make a decision to lay our lives down for God, when we uh, uh, surrender our finances to God, when we surrender, you know, our voices and we can sing praises and speak praises to God, even fellowship with God and, and, and communion with God and fellowship with one another, it is praise unto God. God, I believe God likes it it pleases the Lord when we do these things we present these sacrifices unto God amen stand with me if you will and uh, will you come play for me melody please thank you Lord almighty God